we're on a part two of the Jeep rear end build here. Um, all my parts are here. However, my tools are not. I ordered a bearing splitter kit that's made by OTC. And I ordered it two weeks ago. I still haven't seen it. I contacted the supplier I ordered it from and asked them, you know, when when is this going to be delivered? They have no estimated sh uh, delivery date, no estimated ship date. Uh, OTC apparently has it on back order, and they don't know when we're going to get it. So I need to get this back to this man. He needs his Jeep, and the, the bad weather's coming. I'm going to go to my old school way, break the cage off, get all the rollers out of here, take a cutting wheel, score the inner race, hit it with an air hammer. When it pops loose, it'll slide off. That's what we'll do. And then we'll press the new ones on, and... I'm in the middle of building something, a press to do this, but it's not done because I'm wait. Everything in the world is wait, wait, wait. I'm waiting on an annular cutter. I'm waiting on something else for the hydraulics and everything's just slow to get. So we got to move forward. So let's get going. First thing I do is take a chisel and just disrupt the cage here, try and break it. And then all the rollers come out. Next thing I'm going to do is take a cutting wheel. I'll cut in right here. I'll come in at an angle right here. Being careful not to hit the, the pinion gear. But I'll come in out here at an angle. The, the more gradual angle I make, the more I have to cut. But the farther I get away from here. Uh, so let me get that in there. I'll show you what we do next. Okay, I'll get a groove cut in here. So the edges here and here are obviously thicker. But once you start a crack, that's really all you need. I don't want to go too deep. i got a crack started already. I don't want to grind too deep because so I don't want to hit the, the bearing surface where that goes. Okay. I think we're split. Now we might be able to just tap it down. There we go. Okay. And you see here's the here's the shin that's underneath the pinion. And you see we didn't damage this at all. Uh, I'm using the old pinion nut in the vise to hold it. So now that will get cleaned up because I use a grinder. We need to make sure we get all that crud out of here and everywhere so we'll have to clean this up really good before we put it back together um i'm probably gonna i'm probably gonna go ahead and get the other bearings off next off the carrier assembly and then we'll go back together after it's all cleaned up you can see that crack right there it went all the way across inside there just by that little groove that we made right in there. So we just take a chisel afterwards. I start down here because this is easier to split than this thicker part. I start down here and just work my way up gentle with the chisel. And usually that's enough. We just don't want to go through the back of the race. I think it's broke. Yep. Yep. You see, this is my crack right in here. Right there, there to there. So I've never, I never touched the carrier. Look right there. Somebody else has been here. 
it's had bearings before. Look at that. And look at that pitting on that race. I don't know if you can see that. See right here? I have to zoom in for that. That's pretty bad. That's why you wear glasses. There's just a piece of that just flew off. Looks like it's ready to come off. All right, so you can see again, there's our crack. We didn't go through, but you can now see how bad that inner race was. And there's a lot of where our noise was coming from. Now these bearings have been replaced before. So it leads me to believe, yeah, look, you can see how someone did the, the cut thing here and got into the carrier. All right, so if you see, how it's really really clean here and then it gets this deposit over here that leads me to believe that that bearing was sitting on there a little crooked and letting some debris underneath there so it's very possible I mean that could that could accelerate the wear of a of a bearing and that's the one that was really bad too so I want to make sure we get it down flush you've heard you've heard me talk about making sure Things are in there flush many times, and that's a good indication it wasn't. All right, let's get it cleaned up. So this is the kit I chose. It's a Yukon gear. Uh, it's for re-gearing. So it's a complete insulation kit if you were going to replace your ring and pinion. So it, what it important to me was um, I didn't know if this had been out before or if we needed to re-shim it. And obviously now we know someone else has been in here. Doesn't mean the ring and pinion has been replaced, but... The bearings have once before so what we want to do is make sure that all of our parts are correct before we open this once we open this it's ours so we're going to take the side bearings start with them these are lm803049 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 okay so these two are correct um, these are pinion. These are the the carrier side bearing shims. So in case I have to move that shim, si that carrier side to side, change the shims out. I want to have those. Um, we get two crush sleeves. Not because we need them, it's because we might need them. Um, you only use one, but you get two chances to get your bearing preload set correctly. Gasket maker for the cover. Some paint here for uh, one of these is paint. I think that's the paint there for uh, looking at your pattern on your gears where they mesh the pinion and the ring gear mesh together so you can look at it. New bolts for a ring gear if you needed it. This might be Loctite. It says compound. Loctite for the new pinion nut. Uh, inner pinion bearing and race. Pinion seal. Outer pinion bearing and race. And this is the inner which is a 802048. 802048. Okay, so that's good now i just have to check that one against the one uh, up by the jeep i didn't bring that down and then once i'm happy this is okay we're going to take it out now the the carrier has no shims it just needs to make sure it's pressed flat down on here all the way around which someone may or may not have done before so we're going to do them first which will be these two i'm going to show you how i'm going to do it i don't have a press but i kind of have a press 
Does that make any sense? Let's go see what we can do. All right, so this is the back of my grate all. What I've got set up here, piece of steel plate leveled out, our carrier, the new bearing, and then I use the old race, the inner race on top of here to push it into place. That way, this, as it pushes down on there, it's the perfect diameter of what's here already without damaging it. And if it gets down on there and this happens to stick out, the carrier sticks out past here, it doesn't get stuck. Set a second, and then we'll release the pressure. I wish you could see how much weight I had on that. Oops, just laid in the dirt. All right, so the next step is got to make sure we're laying flat all the way around, and I'm going to show you quickly with the camera, and then I'm going to inspect it. You know, I'll get it out of here where I can see it real good. Okay, same thing race on top and then we just pump the bottle jack now you can see how high this is going my grade all weighs 24,000 pounds I don't know what this weighs back here but you figure it's we got to be trying to lift at least 12,000 pounds looks like it's in there so we'll go ahead and back it off and get this out let's make sure we're good here I guess I should have mentioned that you want to make sure you put your bearings on the right way because if you don't boy that's a big stinker just would have just wasted them have to throw them away but now same thing I'll make sure it's seated all the way around if it is and we'll move on to the pinion all right so we're ready to do this and it's of the utmost importance that you make sure this is perfectly clean because anything that gets behind here just gets uh, magnified as far as being crooked so very last thing we do is go to assemble it is reinspect it and make sure there's nothing on it Again, make sure your bearing's going the right way. And we're going to use the original to press on it because you see how it matches there perfectly. And then we're going to use this, which is nothing more than an old piece of a drive shaft. I cut down and made a driver for carrier bearings. We're going to set that on there. Put our jack on the bottom of the top, one or the other, I guess the top, and push it down on. about pressing stuff is just put a little pressure and let it sit sometimes that's enough way to switch jacks this jack was too tall I need one that was shorter I think it's bottomed out my great old saves the day again don't it yeah Looking to make sure it's in there. <laughs> Flat all the way around, it is. We're good. Now I just gotta tap that back off here. Probably gotta just go inside and get the tapper. Or not. Okay, we're ready to hose it down the last time and start putting it together. Oh, we gotta change the race. races in the pumpkin. Wheel the rest. 
joint caps belong so that they sit in here good. I think we're about good. I'll clean it off. differential mm -hmm. I think we're pretty good I think we can clean it prime it and paint it now I got the yoke primed so I'm gonna get this hosed out so oh, I can do the back side of this there was still RTV on this flat because this just gets RTV there's no gasket to take it up so we got to make sure it's nice and flat yeah you can see that's where they chiseled in to get it to come loose okay all right I'm happy we can paint it now I can't get too close because I'll get overspray on my glass that rear end out so I'm gonna use diesel fuel. I got about two and a half gallons of diesel here, an electric pump. I've got it hooked up to this 
piece of uh, brake line, quarter inch brake line. You see the end of it, you see how I crushed it. So it'll create a spray. You see what I mean here, watch. So it creates a big spray. So what I'm gonna do is shove it in the axle and run it back and forth and spray it. And hopefully, clear out a bunch of that horrible Metal plate, so. Yeah. It's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but. Well, we can clean up some of it. At least most of it's going in the drain pans. Turn it. And, you know, we're getting pressure is the big thing. Call that side good. covered mm -hmm. you see all the metal shavings yeah. I'm not running that through again you, them socks in. if that's not not enough I can get something else bigger like that Catch that before it goes in, in the soup. Well, I can try and catch it, but I gotta put it down. We got it. It is clean. We run it through. I don't know how many times. I don't get anything on my fingers anymore. So I think we're good. I think that spray helped out. That sprayer really helped out. A little bit right here at the edge. I can get that wiped out, but she's clean now. Alright, I'm happy with that. Now I can clean out the center pumpkin. We can start going together. Alright, so we are just about ready to go together. Um, the next step is going to be uh, we're going to put axle bearings and seals in both sides. I have to push, press in the uh, drive in the races for the pinion bearings uh, and then we're going to go together so uh, i think we'll stop here it's a good place to stop everything is prepped and ready to go and the next video will be the final assembly so i hope you guys enjoyed we'll catch you on the next one